welcome welcome okay so i have a question for you i have a question for you you ever get tired like real real tired like your eyelids are like 50 pounds and you need like toothpicks to hold your eyelids open like because you're so tired you can't even stand it like you're just blank staring you know and and not really taking stuff in i know y'all feel that way right so when you feel that way don't try to drive don't drive when you're feeling that tired pull over take a nap you're wondering why i'm saying this right well in the last three nights two of those three times i've seen accidents happen as a result of driver fatigue i can't guarantee the second one but i'm pretty sure of it because there's a time zone that a lot of accidents happen when drivers are tired and that's between 2 a.m and 6 a.m so between that gap there's a lot of accidents that happen from driver fatigue when I mean, you're just so daggone tired you can't keep your eyes open anymore okay now one of them i can guarantee that's what happened and i'm going to show you some footage of what that truck looked like after the accident and i can guarantee that because that set of doubles that was in that accident they work for the same company as i do fedex so it's hard to see um, from the lighting here but um that roof is ripped off so that is really kind of hard to tell in this video. This is right behind the driver's door. So you can see the battery box is ripped off. The fuel tank is open, ripped open, smashed like a can opener. Multiple holes in it. The steps are just demolished. Under the cab, smashed up. The cab is smashed. whole trailer is just rippled and bent you can see right here the second trailer actually did come smashing into this side um, so you can see the fasteners that held this trailer together ripped off and ripped the trailer wide open like that tires flat and it's hard to see but inside here on uh, the trailer the bottom of the trailer has the bulk bottom and it had um, drop down deck and it's just smashed up it's ripped open um, these parts I don't know if you can see them but they're supposed to be flat more flat tires the exhaust system you can see that this right here is supposed to be attached to the bottom rip right off this step is smashed you can, here you can see some of the frame damage a little bit even this rim is bent wires hoses cords belts all just ripped off here's part of the coolant system those are ripped off See the arm going in there to the tire. This bumper just mangled up. Fasteners ripped off the bumper as well, ripping into pieces. This is all steel as well, guys. set of doubles happened to be at the yard that I pull into so I left the yard 45 minutes later driving down the highway <laughs> getting my stuff and I see an accident on the westbound side truck up on an embankment back down jackknife on the back side of the guardrail demolished the only thing in, in, in sight it was around 5 a.m. so I was like either the driver hit black ice because it was raining or he fell asleep next day I get in there I see little red notes everywhere all over the office and i'm like hey how's that driver um from yesterday's accident i saw i, w I went by you know right after it happened there was only a the police there i'm like well he only hurt his arm but you know no probably doesn't have a job 
and you're like, what? He just wrecked his truck and I didn't have a job? Yeah, well, let's talk about that real fast, okay? Let's talk about the amount of money that that accident from falling asleep cost. One, it could have cost him his life, right? That could have been the ultimate. And um, he didn't. Luckily, he just hurt his arm. You know, he got real lucky. So what it did happen, though, he was pulling a set of doubles, like I said. It caused some major damage. I mean, everything's totaled. The truck's totaled, the first trailer, the converter, you know, the little thing that hooks the trucks together, and the second trailer. All of it's totaled, demolished. Not only was that demolished, but the fuel tank was ruptured. Yay! Hazmat spill! Now, some of y'all that aren't in the industry don't understand how serious and how much a hazmat spill can cost. So this is what's going to have to happen now. Because that fuel spilt in the dirt, they're going to have to come in, bring in a backhoe, dig the dirt up, take it to a cleaning facility, and they're going to have to clean that dirt. They really are going to have to clean that dirt. I don't know the process. It ain't my job, but I know that's what happens. Then they bring in new fresh dirt. Then they have to reseed. Oh, don't forget the guardrail that he crashed back down onto. You got the guardrail. And we're not done yet. He probably needed at least two heavy-duty wreckers, if not three. They were able to keep the truck and the first trailer hooked and pull them to the yard. But you still have your converter and you still have your second trailer. I don't know the damage that was done to the converter and the second trailer because it wasn't at the yard. I didn't see it. You have to have at least another truck to pull that second trailer, even if you could put the converter on the back end of the second trailer. That is expensive. Expensive. I don't even want to know the cost that has to come with that. So you got two trailers, one converter, one truck, guardrail, clean dirt, new dirt, seating, the hazmat team to come clean it up, the, the tow trucks, um, and, you know, whoever came to the scene of the accident. That's a lot of expense. And there's something called the CSA score. And that's what holds drivers and companies accountable for their accidents. So when that driver was in the accident, not only did it hurt his license, but it hurt FedEx's CSA score. So now it's a nationwide database holding you accountable for your tickets, accidents, fines, whatever. Anything dealing with your driving record, you know, it's, it's going to go on there. It's a nationwide database and it's attached to your CDLs if you're a truck driver. If your company is attached with your company name. So because of your CSA score as a nationwide database, you can't just hop over to the next state, the next county, and go get you a new job. With all that damage, that's just going to hike up his CSA score to a real bad score. Now he's going to be looking for a new career. Not a new job, but a new career. Because he drove when he was tired. When he couldn't keep his eyes open, and he's having to use toothpicks, and then it's not working, you know? It was 45 minutes. I know what he was thinking. I'm almost there. Let me press on. I got this. I can do it. I'm almost there. Then I'll be done. I'll be off my shift. No big deal. It is a big deal because now you don't have a job. I don't know. Maybe he has babies at home and a, and a wife that he's supporting. That's a big deal, folks. We don't have just a little kind of bad day with trucking. You have a bad day and big stuff happens, okay? So let me give you some helpful tips on, on things that I do, if I even feel a little bit tired, obviously turn up the music. That usually doesn't really help. I don't care what anybody says. Wind down the window. That normally doesn't help either. I drive with red lights on. So above the driver's seat right here, there's a red light. Can't see it right now because it's daytime. The cab is filled with red lights. Turn on those red lights. The red lights help bring more light into the truck and it's going to help keep you awake a little bit better so i drive with red lights on most of the time unless it's raining or snowing then it glares too much off the off the windows another thing call someone i know it's in the middle of the night it's early in the morning but y'all truckers know other truckers you know somebody that's gonna be awake most of the time not always but call someone if you can call them talking to somebody's gonna stimulate your mind and it's gonna keep you awake Another little trick I do is hot peppermint candies. The little disc, circle disc. I'm actually all out. I have to get some more. I keep them in this Tupperware container right here. Because it just re-stimulates your mind. It's real hot, you know. You start sucking on it and you're like, ooh. That helps. If you're feeling real tired, get off the highway. Just get off. Either take you a nap, a 15-minute power nap, half-hour power nap, whatever. It just wonders, absolutely wonders. I can go sometimes take a 10 minute power nap and then drive the rest of my shift another 400 miles 
okay? So take a nap. Another thing you can do, get out at a truck stop. Not just a rest area, but a truck stop. Get out of your truck. Spend a minute going outside walking around because it's either going to be hotter or it's going to be colder. It's going to put your body into stimulation mode. And you're like, oh, it's not so comfortable in here anymore. Like I said, it's going to be hotter. It's going to be colder. And then go inside where there's fluorescent or LED lights. And they're going to overstimulate your, your eyes visually because now you've just been staring in the dark all this time. Now you're in bright lights. Hello. It's going to wake you up. All right. And then uh, go to the bathroom, get you a cup of coffee. Now, don't overdo the coffee, folks. Come on, don't. You don't need to drink a gallon of coffee. You don't need to get the Red Bulls. You don't need to get all the, the five-hour energies and all like that. Don't do that. Your body's going to be hooked to it. And what's going to happen is when you try to go to sleep, you're not going to go to sleep. You're not. So now you're fighting sleep because you're loaded up with caffeine. And then when you need to be awake, you're tired. Okay? So just get you a medium coffee. Walk around. Get back in the truck and get back at it. It's another, also another great thing. So that, that's kind of what I do when I get tired. And you know what? If I'm just, just last week, I was feeling real tired, real tired. And I was like, man, I'm almost there. I hate to pull over. I was a half hour from the hub, closer than that guy on the same road, closer than him. A half hour. You know what? I pulled right over, took me a 10 minute nap. It was snowing, it was nasty out. Trust me, I just wanted to get there. But I pulled over and I took me a nap. Just a 10-minute power nap. I wasn't tired the rest of the night. I got to my hub, switched up my set, got back on the road. Wasn't feeling tired anymore at all. Take a nap. Because it's not going to make you some bigger, badder, cooler, more respectful trucker if you drive tired. People are not going to respect you. They're going to say, you know what, you're stupid. Like, don't, don't put your life, other people's lives in jeopardy, your career. It's not worth it, people. It's not worth it. So just pull over, do some of those tricks I just told you about. Because, you know, like I said, the CSA score, that's that's big now these days. You used to be able to get away with it. You can't do that no more. You can't. So don't try. All right? Pulled the truck and the first trailer to the hub that I run into at night. So I know the video is dark and it's rainy, it's cold. Try to do the best I could for y'all. Like I said, it's probably driver fatigue because you can tell it's just a slow drift and the way they hit something, it's just a slow drift, boom, right into something. And they drove into an embankment. That driver probably didn't fare just a hurt arm, okay? A few weeks back, well, probably about a month and a half ago, a trucker we knew started to have medical problems. And I don't know if he didn't have time I don't, I don't know. I just know he had a medical problem starting to develop as he was driving. And he drove off of a bridge embankment and drove down, you know, you know, the highway's up here and you're driving by over the bridge and the road kind of cuts down underneath. He drove off the side of that, guys. He had a truck partner sleeping in the back. He lost his life. So if you're not feeling good, you're feeling not even just tired. If you're all of a sudden just not feeling good, Pull over, guys. The driver doesn't have his life anymore. And his truck partner is probably still fighting for his life. He was in critical condition. That truck was awful. I mean, just heart-wrenching. Like I said, truckers, you know that. We don't have bad days. Because a bad day in a trucker's life is a lot more than just a little bad day. Okay? We don't get a paper cut. We don't get the boss yelling at us. We don't... No. You talk about major damage and just devastation okay so y'all stay safe all right stay safe out there feeling tired pull over all right guys so hopefully those are some tips and tricks that can help you fight driver fatigue and sleepiness okay so until next time y'all drive safe and see ya give me my dreams